speak to yourself with love? What does the voice in your head sound like? Is it truly your voice? Or can you sometimes smell your mother's words? Catch the scent of your father's disapproval? Notice headlines from the media stamped across your mind suggesting you are not enough. We live in a world where language is often manipulated and misused to serve those in power. It is often used to serve a particular structural agenda. The language around us constructs our realities. It builds the backing choir to our inner voice. For me, that inner voice has been muddied with melodies of shame. As a queer Pakistani Muslim woman, I have at times internalized the messages shoved down my throat. Messages that I am sin, that I am too queer to be Muslim, too Muslim to be queer, that my existence is contradictory and fundamentally flawed. I had swallowed these messages, tablet by tablet, when I took a near-fatal overdose over 10 years ago. Women of color are often taught lethal lessons on self-hatred and shame. Systemic and societal hierarchies exist which render some lives as less human. We are not given guidance on how to love ourselves in a white world which reinforces narratives that place us as less worthy. The beginning of self-love is therefore recognizing that we matter and that we deserve love. Black feminist writer and superhero, Bell Hooks, helped me understand that love is not a feeling. It is instead an action, a choice towards the spiritual growth of self and of others. The loving action that I have chosen towards my healing is writing to myself, writing to myself with love through poetry. I am learning to resist the harmful narratives imposed upon me, to reauthor my own truth with my own voice. I write over the Islamophobic stereotypes of Muslim women as silenced, submissive, sexually inhibited. I write over the homophobic assumptions that homosexuality is the white man's evil, that one cannot love Allah or God whilst loving someone of their own gender, that sex and intimacy cannot be a form of prayer, as a woman of color, I have often felt under siege, and my emergent strategy is one of love. I write to their oppression with love. I write to their ignorance with love. I write to myself with love, with love, over and over, until the remnant ink of their hatred starts to fade from my heart. It is an ongoing and committed and really difficult and uncomfortable practice, learning to speak to myself with the kindness of a friend, learning to remother the inner child in me with forgiveness. It is a transformative and expansive process of unlearning harmful narratives and relearning acts of love, unlearning and relearning, unlearning and relearning rewriting the inner script of my life through poetry. I'm going to share a poem with you now. Um, this is one of my poems that is inspired by a line from the writer Mary Jean Chan. It's called, Dead Daughters Do Not Disappoint. Cut your umbilical cord. It has become a noose to hang loose around your neck. 
Your mother's words stitch a pillow, inviting you to the tenderness of a slumber you never have to wake from. And when Nas said, sleep is the cousin of death, you wonder whether he ever smelt the stench of first breath after that 6 a.m. alarm, which reeks with the unbearable stench of still living. Still living. You hit snooze and watch God ringing your phone. Ask him. Ask him whether Ammar will be more forgiving in paradise. Ask him if you'll even get there. But regardless of his advice, you know that even your dead body could not be baptized of sin in an ocean of her tears. You cannot stop her weeping. Exit her mouth. I know there are days you wish you never came out, days you wish you never came out of her. But it gets better. Soon you'll stop playing Biggie suicidal thoughts on loop. Soon you'll be blasting Tupac's keep your head up and really internalizing that if they can't learn to love you, you should leave them. You don't need them. You don't need her. So cut your umbilical cord. Let the baby in you run free. Let her run back to you. You are her home. You are home. A home that you can never be kicked out of. Thank you. I hope I hope that this poem demonstrates that there is also room for rage here. Also room for heartache and grief over all of the wars that I have endured with others and myself. But I am learning to meet it all with compassion and a self-acceptance that is radical. In current times, poetry may be seen as irrelevant. But how can such a personal truth-telling not be political, not be necessary, not be urgent? As a poet, I stand naked with my words, knowing that each expression creates a world in itself. I labor with love and brave vulnerability to offer the exact articulation of my truth, a truth that needs to be heard. This self-definition is a vital act of liberation for black and brown bodies that have been colonized. Falling in love with myself and falling in love with another woman is a political act in itself as a queer Muslim. My poetry therefore becomes a loving protest a revolution against structures defined by institutional dehumanization and profit. In meeting myself with love and unconditional compassion, my heart opens to doing the same with others. It allows an embrace of our fundamental interconnectedness as humanity. Another one of my favorite black feminist writers, Audre Lorde, once said, there are no new ideas, only new ways of making them felt. So I will leave you with another one of my poems, offering my truth in hope that it might elicit a new feeling in you. May it encourage you to meet yourself with compassion, to meet yourself with a self-acceptance that is radical, and maybe even to speak to yourself with a little bit more love. May I encourage you to rewrite that inner voice with a love that you are so deserving of. This poem is called My Dua is Love, which translates as My Prayer is Love. I am learning that the desire is not dirty, that I need not pray myself clean, that
that shame need not shove me to my knees, forehead to zameen to bring me closer to my deep. My dua is love. My dua is love, it pours pure. Like Zamzam through my body, through her body, through my body, through her body. We are holy. We are holy in liquid size and sweat soaked skin. I cannot tell where she ends and I begin as love interweaves through estuaries of limb in this tapestry of brown. It is not a sin. It is not a sin, instead, a call to prayer. It is a call to prayer whenever my name leaves her lips with devotion. I know that God is here. Whenever I am with her, I know that God is here. Thank you.